All right. Welcome, welcome. I'm Sharon Svensson, Svensson Hypnosis, and I'm here with Linda Modaff. Um, we have been working together kind of unofficially since 2009. It's like, yeah. wow, that's crazy. We go back. We were high school, um, uh, not high school, we were grade school buddies. So she's my <laughs> oldest friend in the world. Um, so, but since 2015, then we started to work together on a regular basis. And um, I would kind of describe that our journey has been about um, really following the joy, living the life that you want to live, um, making those positive choices uh, that you want to make. And I've seen so many different changes um, from uh, you really stepping into your life, from uh, making yoga and walks just kind of a regular part of your life, um, just doing things that you love, that I've seen, it's like lots of rich friendships. It's like you brought more uh, beautiful souls into your life and your life just kept getting more expansive. Um, we've seen health issues uh, clear up, uh, more energy. Um, you wanted to be able to make more healthy choices like instead of sitting around uh, maybe watching mindless TV or binge eating, you wanted to go out and, and live life. And oh my gosh, you are just such a good example. And you were doing that um, uh, before we met, but you'd kind of have more kind of back and forth periods. Like I remember you were taking this theater class, Broadway theater class. Yeah, um, musical theater. Yeah, so I mean, you were doing a, so many different positive things, but you wanted to have it more consistent and big and a beautiful part of your life. And then also, you had just had your dad transition not too long ago to, to, to pure positive love and light. So that kind of stirred up a lot of trouble. Um, so let's talk about just all the joyful changes that unfolded and how you really did start to live a more engaged, big, joyful life. Um, and we can get specific or we can go general, but what do you remember kind of some of the different changes? I think the biggest thing for me is <clears throat> I used to have so much more extreme downs and I just don't have those anymore. Those times where I would be stuck to the couch, I would literally like hate, love hate with the couch and, and those really stuck down times. And, and at this point, I can't remember the last time I did that. And that was really huge for me. It always felt like this like looming part of myself that I couldn't, I couldn't trust to stay in a good place that, that, that I, I, you know, it was a very hard space for me. And I always had those positive spaces around too, but it was like this underlying fog that I just can't remember the last time I've gone there. And so um, much of that is, I th is through the habitual practice that we've done that week to week, just like, eating right or exercise is like bringing that positivity back into focus and relearning that groove because there was that old groove that was so ingrained and through the consistent work i think there's different grooves that i can go to grooves that are yeah it's okay to have emotions emotions are just information like these different things in my head that are so much more positive that let, to let myself have those emotions and go through them to let other people have them and without judgment like uh that you know that's okay linda i still love you, <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> yeah yeah and i i love that um it's like each year your life gets bigger and more expansive and richer and i think a lot of people are going to relate in that you were such a loving soul um, that you wanted good things for everybody, uh, for the world, for um, uh, our country. Um, and you'd get thrown off sometimes by other people's pain and suffering, uh, the pain and suffering in the world. 
and again, and in relationships too, it's like where you kind of get caught up in their emotions. Um, so that when you started to more consistently go to that place of joy, um, you were able to do more fun things for yourself. Um, like, you know, the, the, you do the daily yoga on the beach, which I love. Um, and, uh, you, it sounds like you do like daily walks and, um, that you started to do fun things. It's like, oh my gosh, that sounds really fun. You, I remember you telling me you would um, pick a new place on some kind of tour guide to take a walk in LA in the mountains and uh, just cool architectural trips that you would take with your son. Um, so t tell me a little bit how uh, relationships it's with family changed. Um, I think or relationships. Yeah, with all relationships, I think that that understanding of, I think I used to feel that, oh, part of empathizing, if I was a good person, I needed to feel bad when someone else was feeling bad, that that was, otherwise I was, what was I, cold or unfeeling or something, yeah. and then, and then yeah. you know, or, you know, mass shootings and things, I mean, that just be devastating, and which they are, of course, but having working on that, that it's still better to go to joy because that's such a much more inspired place that really is more helpful than just feeling bad with someone. And I, that's a huge distinction for me to, because I'm very motivated on helping other people. So to see that distinction as a better place of helping makes all the difference where I would have I felt like I was helping by also feeling bad or, or down. So I think that's, that, that goes across the board for friends and family and just that, that bigger world thing, you know, when, I mean, I still will get sad or upset about whatever, but kind of in, instead of falling into a funk, there's this other place of getting back to getting back to joy because that is the more helpful place. That is the place where I bring a better something to the yeah I, I love that I remember when um it I guess back around 2009 10 11 somewhere in that area uh you would if it's even you were you were volunteering then but uh you'd get thrown off a lot uh by other people's opinions or grumpiness and with your own kids you would get kind of sometimes caught up in the fears and the worries and one of the biggest things that we went to back then was ha starting to have those positive expectations. If we're gonna make stuff up, let's make up some good stuff. <laughs> let's let's imagine good things unfolding. And um, you did. And you just really, didn't you see a lot of beautiful changes because of that? Like where you, how you showed up as a volunteer, um, kind of trusting that things would come together and work out for your kids, for, um, even um, uh, an end project. So, so yeah, yeah. So much, so much of our lives we spend in our own head, and we have that control of that. And 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 I think there is like old survival mechanisms that tell us to focus on the problems because we need to survive. So <laughs> restructuring that to say like. Just like you're saying, well, you're making it up anyway. None of these things have happened. So <laughs> what are, like good things that happen, whatever is going to happen is what it's going to be anyway. But you could have spent that time feeling bad or go in feeling good with all kinds of positive ideas or daydreams or whatever. And it, yeah, I mean, that's really huge. It's a, it's a massive distinction and I don't do it all the time. But once again, it's like there's, because of the habitual practice, there's this underlying grooves that I put in there that are more supportive than my old negative grooves that I could fall to. Yeah. And I think that's, that's so and, huge. It's like changing yeah. those really habitual thought patterns. It's been massive. Well, and then another thing, uh, so that, that makes me think of how you, when you thought of yourself, you didn't really think of yourself as beautiful and uh, cause you had struggled uh, with food and weight issue and um, kind of binge eating and uh, started to bring into the concept of, well, beautiful is a feeling uh, so that 
I remember you kind of shared when you had gotten an award at a volunteer um, oh. celebration and you were able to really enjoy that and then go back to it and start to feel yourself as beautiful and kind of fast forward to when you took a trip and um, I don't know if it was in Germany, but uh, you just, you were dressed up in these clothes and this young woman comes up to you and <laughs> says something like, I want to be you. <laughs> it's, it's like that. It's like you embodied. Um, so you, you kind of let go of um, feeling beautiful, being dependent on your fat content or uh, letting go of other people's opinions and really owning uh, what you wanted to focus on and how you wanted to feel about yourself. And, um, yeah, I, I thought that was so, so beautiful when you shared that one story. It's like, oh my gosh, that's, yeah. kind of, I don't know. It was just like, yes. Cause you were embodying. I am beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah. Which I, I just love. Yeah. That I mean, and, a, and along the way from that came, um, uh, more healthier and healthier choices. Uh, can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Um, I think for me, the, the food journey, um, I've, I've gone up and down in weight. Oh God. Since like the end of high school, like different times. And I've been someone who can like focus on it and lose this weight by doing all these different things. But and so I've stayed there for a time period, but then it goes back up. But I've certainly been someone to beat myself up about it and also use food in so many different ways. Emotional, boredom, reward. Um, and one thing, freelancing, working at home, you know, oh, I got to get this project done. What in the refrigerator will help me do that? Um, so, so kind of instead of working on a new, um, diet regime it's kind of been working on that bigger picture of how of what do i want in life and and for like the dinners thing it's like well i want that connection of us at as a family at dinner i want that feeling that that feels when you come in and we're making dinner and we're all sitting together so kind of looking at those looking at these other ideas of what I want around the food is a new journey for me. And I'm really, I'm, I'm excited about that. I think it, it's, it's, it's another place where I'm letting go of my all or nothing. I have to be eating perfectly. My idea of perfect, well, you know, and you came with a lot of, fall off, you know, you, you came with a lot of reasons. I mean, you had some, um, uh, it's like your parents transitioned to pure positive love and light um, earlier on. And so part of that was a fear too about, uh, it's like, oh, I've, we've got to eat the right things. My family has to eat the right things. So really coming from, and sometimes really extreme fear, uh, which is so natural uh, from when you came from. And now, so it's not only been a journey, it's, to me, it's, it's not only a journey of you um, focused and allowing yourself to feel beautiful, but you let go of a ton of different fears and anxieties so that food could feel more natural and effortless and easy and just like a beautiful part of your life. And it's been incremental in different steps, Very. but you're in such a different place now. Can um, maybe tell us a little bit about that that you can think of. Just for me, even willing, well, I was sharing with you like last night, I, going to parties is like a big food trigger for me. And I always feel like, oh, I want to go. I'm just going to end up by the food table <laughs> eating, uh -huh. eating the whole night. And then I'm going to feel bad and I'm going to come home and I'm going to eat more. And then, so we had a party last night, um, but my son also had his girlfriend over and I'm like, oh, I really want to. I don't want them just to go out for pizza again. I want us to sit down and eat a meal together. So I said, I'm still going to make a meal. I'm going to make a meal for all of us. And I picked something new I'd never made, like a uh, recipe online and, and just, just went for it and put on a Christmas movie and cooked with the wine and drank a little wine. And I just had uh -huh. this like fun time making this new thing. And it, and it just was exactly what I had wanted. And then 
when we went to the party, I was already full and I ate a couple of things and we said hello and that was nice and I felt fine not staying any later than I wanted as well. Like I gave myself permission yeah. to do it all the ways that I wanted to do it. And in that was fine. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about, oh, the party starts then and I need to get there then. And I should, it, I just yeah. kind of really yeah. went with what I wanted and yeah, I came home and didn't eat anymore. <laughs> yeah. Went up, went up to bed and, and uh, yeah, that felt really good. That felt like a real, um, oh, oh and I kind of remember too, that makes me think of how um, you used to have this TV that was the center of your living room and uh, you didn't read at night. You wanted to do different things, but sometimes it's like you, something kind of held you back. And I remember um, uh, doing a suggestion, well, why don't you move the TV somewhere else? And you're like, what? I can just do that? And then uh, that led you to, um, oh, you mean I could just read at night in bed? I mean, I couldn't do that because Steve wouldn't be happy about it. And then you realized, oh, that's not even his limitation. That's my made up idea and belief. Um, yeah. So that you started to let go of these kind of uh, made up ideas and beliefs that held you back from doing what you really wanted to do, following what felt right to you and your guidance. Yeah, we had the big flat screen TV over the fireplace, like so many families. And and when I said, I want to I want to take this out of here, that was like, can I say that? Like my whole family's kind of like, <laughs> what do you want to do, but they love me and it's not, it's not that there weren't other TVs in the house. So yeah. we do we have a beautiful piece of art up there. And interestingly now, recently, a different TV has kind of moved back in, in a uh -huh. different place. Yeah. But I'm not at the same place. Oh, and yeah. I'm yeah, because it's not the TV. No. But, but we would talk so, about how, well, we might as well line ourselves up for success just yeah. like um, not eating junk food could be easier if you don't buy it to begin with. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and you started yeah, to certainly. do all those different little incremental stuff and yeah, which I think yeah. um, you, you had that desire. This, it's like you had this big vision of how you wanted to live, just like even with food. Um, that you liked eating food that um, was kind of lovingly made, whether you lovingly made it or um, you could just kind of feel that love at the farmer's market with the hummus that you bought, that this was made <laughs> with love and the ingredients were so beautiful. And, and you just really wanted to have this, I think, loving life. And I love how uh, you're just such a beautiful example of you, you stepped into it. Um, I think about how it led you to be even more creative. Like uh, to me, I know you're, she's a, a amazing artist um, that it led you to, ex it sounds like you always loved exploring different mediums, but I just think of how with your, when you started to do the photography, it just like took you to this whole different level, um, uh, such your own unique and beautiful visions and seeing things in different ways, like your flower pictures or the different ways, the different shadows. And that led you to do a photography class uh, that you, you teach at one of your schools um, that I could just see to me, it felt like your creativity. It's like, as you let go of what other people thought, because that was kind of a big part of well, if I don't get people's approval or if they don't like it or if I don't get the um, accolades, I shouldn't pursue that. And you just really uh, started to go that beautiful path of, well, I like it. And you just, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but I bet you do. <laughs> well, I think that, yeah, the teaching was something that I'd always been curious about and to have the opportunity come about to do it in this way through a need for the school so I could jump, jump in and do it. Um, so that's always really motivating to me. And then, and then through doing it, you know, having insecurities like, ah, I'm going to add a teacher. I don't know how to classroom manage and stuff. And, and I think the, 
the working with you has helped me so much with that. When I come in with like, oh, these kids won't do what I want. And you're like, well, what do you really want? Do you want to control them? Or we just have these different discussions about it. And it would always help me come back in with a fresh attitude and, and really feel, even though I'm still learning those parts of it, I can feel every time where I'm at makes a whole huge difference on how I can communicate with them and how they react to me and then how I react to that. Um, it's, it's just been amazing and, you know, to be so. Well, and I saw um, as you made following the joy, the priority, um, you were more creative in your projects. Um, you went from, I have to plan and feeling guilty that you didn't to yeah. um, being able to, uh, actually plan more, um, but not from a place of guilt because then you could be spontaneous too. And you found, oh my gosh, I can come up with brilliant ideas on the, you know, fly that, yeah. so that you really went to a whole different level, um, for creativity and spontaneity and following that joy. Um, and not to say that you weren't a human, welcome to the human race and sometimes got frustrated oh. and stuff, <laughs> but, um, that, you it's like different you were kind of worried about can I really follow my joy and and do what the school expects me to do and you found that it's like the school loved you and you got lots of positive reviews from uh, uh, the kids and parents um, so that following the joy just works out so much better yeah that's been that's been such a big help because I would get Again, I'll, anxious over this expectation of what I thought I was supposed to be doing, where I thought that looked like. And it should be me like really organized and planning so far in advance and having all these things, which I don't know who I thought that person was anyway. It's not me. <laughs> um, it just really with, you know, imagining it's all going to work out fine and great and trusting that I'll come up with something great and and sometimes I do, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does, but it, it's overall, it's all good anyway. And it yeah. really has helped me find more joy, even outside of class where I'm not angsting over preparing. I'm not making it a heavy thing. I'm trusting more that it's going to work out fine. And, and then you'll get even wonderful things. There was a miscommunication and we thought we would heard we didn't have class and in the end we did, but we didn't know. And so we didn't even show up for class. And it was fine. <laughs> like, not that <laughs> you know, they have someone come in, they just have the kids draw or whatever. But I, I, thought that I love be, that. And yeah, because of love, like, oh, what I thought would be the worst thing. It happened. Yeah. You know, was, yeah. <laughs> where we don't make things so. <laughs> when you're, yeah. When you're following the joy, we can let go of that drama. It's like, yeah. oh, I guess this isn't such a big deal. The world's not going to end that. <laughs> there was, it was a blip. I mean, there was just literally no problem at all. And I, not making practice of that, but, yeah. <laughs> but it was a great example to me. Like, what is the, what is the worst that's going to happen? Which is so much yeah. more of a free place. And then, yeah, then there has been times where the idea was so last minute. And it was like, wow, this one worked out great. Huh. That. Cool. Yeah, so that we really can relax and that's where the creativity yeah. and ideas flow. So we could probably go on for a long time. Um, but uh, what would you say to the person listening in? Uh, because the mastery of joy packages, to me, I think that's the best. I do, uh, I, off and on I do retreats and I do uh, workshops online and I do um, workshops in the town that I live too. But I call my joy shops. Um, but the mastery of joy packages, they are an investment of time and they're an investment of money. So what would you say to the person that was thinking about doing that? Is it really worth the money? Is it worth uh, taking the time? And what, what do you think they're going to get from it if they do? I, I feel like for me, it's, it's just been one of the best investments I've ever made because it's been an investment I love hearing that. In, well, in myself, <laughs> in my in my life, in myself and how I feel about my life every day and 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 the overtime thing is huge. I mean, nothing is a magic bullet and it really is that habitual thing over time. And there have been times where I'm like, "Ugh, I don't want to do it today." But <laughs> it's been 
that weekly thing that has helped me change those really deep underlying grooves. And I think we all have that in us, those things that aren't serving us. And, and I'm just rewriting those grooves with those po more positive things. So I don't, I'm not perfect all the time. I'm never perfect, but well, none of us but, are. Yeah. You know, but, but I have these other defaults that come in. And then I know when I, when I am being helpful with anyone else, it's from this better place that even, that even feels like a better thing to share with them or a stronger place to be for other people, which I'm so, which is so motivating to me. I, I mean, I just can't even imagine how it's just, well, it's, it's really changed probably your friendships, how you relate as a mom, as a wife, um, as a volunteer, that it's, it's enjoy the way to go. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah, it really is. And, and so much more inspired place from that and so much um, less judgmental place of myself and other people like they get to have their emotions too. And, and it's going to, you know, this, if those are temporary. And then we yeah. all, and then we go yeah. into another place. And knowing when I do have those down times, I have that other voice in my head, like, this is temporary. Or even it what is this lasts, telling you? It you know? lasts way less, doesn't it? I'll tell people where before you might have been in a funk for years, months, weeks, uh, days, even if it's like you kind of let it go and then it came back. Um, well, that can go down sometimes to uh, minutes and seconds. And I know I've seen that with you where maybe you turn something around in a few hours. Um, maybe you turn it around in uh, a minute or you've even turned things around in a second by it's like, because you've got those other patterns of joyful yes. thought going. So what would you say um, for the hypnosis? Uh, is hypnosis pretty powerful stuff? Uh, I, I think, it, yeah, and I love, love, love having those, those recordings that I can just keep doing that freshen up. And I know for me, the more I can do that consistently, it's just even better. Like just, and it, and it's so easy for me. I like if I can take it on a walk or just at this time, you know, or whatever, even if I'm doing something else or if it can be when I'm like taking a nap, I'll, I'll put them on or uh -huh. it just, the more, the more that's there again, I think those positive things start to become those little voices in your head. Yeah. That's As what other people have said. It's like where they can hear this other positive voice in their head and that can override the negativity because to me the hypnosis can be really magical and that it can really fast forward um the positive change because i've seen where uh, maybe in our where we're talking together you're maybe in a resistant place um yes <laughs> like all of us like all of us um i think we can all relate and it can be hard to get out of that kind of negative pattern of thought. But with the hypnosis, where I'll say, well, that's okay. You know, let's just do the medit you know, the meditative yeah. part, the hypnosis part of it. And then all of a sudden at the end of it, it's like, oh, it's all gone. Um, yeah. I feel yeah. really good. And so um, it may start to come back, but now you're at a different place and you've got that positive voice in your head so that things really can um, hyper speed and change our lives with that beautiful tool and i and it is so powerful because it's not it's it's not asking anything from me i'm not having to think i'm not having to whatever i just let go and then yeah. those good things can come in where where the conversation is equally great and important but sometimes that can feel I'm resisting or I'm like, oh, but, that's, but no, that's, that's beautiful because that's, I'm, I'm really more just getting information for the yeah. hypnosis. Um, but I, I love, cause I really want people to know too, where they'll think, oh my gosh, I, I'm not going to do it right now. I've got too much going on. It feels too hard. Well, this is the path of more effortlessness and ease. It's a path of more nurturing and love so that I know in the beginning, I don't think you follow through and listen to the meditations for the first, I don't know, two years. It wasn't in, maybe until the last year or so that you started to do it more often. Is, is that 
accurate. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's grown incrementally for sure. I mean, it's been very incremental and that's been great for me as well because I can be someone who wants to like, I'm going to do this healthy eating and I'm going to do it all and I'm going to do it perfectly. (laughs) And I can do that for a while, but it's not like a long-term growth thing. And then when I fall off of that, it feels like, oh, I'm such a loser. So having this really incremental building is so much more real and and knowing that that's okay and that's the way it works. Yeah. And I remember it's like I would suggest it and it felt really good to you to um, be free. It's like, well, I get to do what I want and, you know, I'm not doing it at this time and this is what I'm going to do. And and that felt really beautiful too, that just like you said, um, I would get, you would get contrary or, you know, mad at me. And that felt really good too, because it's like, oh, you know, the world doesn't end. I don't destroy her. I get to have my own feelings and emotions. And it's just, it's so freeing. And so um, to just kind of let people know that, uh, yeah, this isn't about, um, uh, me coercing or, or forcing, it's a very empowering journey. And yeah. it's the opposite of um, s- more struggle and work. Um, it can be temporarily maybe in the moment where, uh, like you said, you, you might get angry or mad uh, or feel <laughs> stubborn. But well, in the end, there's more relief because then we yeah. go to the place where you just get to let go and relax. And um, I love where you'd say, okay, just stop, Sharon. We're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I like, don't want to okay. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really mad about this, and I'm not going to not be mad about it. And so just stop. <laughs> just stop it. But, and- <laughs> but for me, who is someone who doesn't like to be confrontational, that's been really that I yeah. felt safe to say that. That's like huge. I, yeah, I love know. it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we better wrap this up. I don't know how much time we've, we've done, but hopefully there's people that have stuck through it and listened to the end. So what would you say to somebody considering a, a mastery of joy package? What would you tell them if somebody said, well, I don't know, is I, it really going to change my life? Personally, it's been, I, I can't imagine having not done it. I'm so grateful. I feel like it's, it's really been the best investment in myself I've ever done because it's the underlying, it's, it's this underlying growth thing that just goes under everything for me. Yeah. So, yeah. It affects here. everything from, uh, health and finances and, yeah, how we live our lives, following those dreams. And- Self-acceptance and acceptance oh, of yeah. other people. And yeah, and from there, growing to those other things that you want. But it's never out really about those outside things. It's yeah. really all, and yeah, we're all, it's all in here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yay. Well, yay. Thank you so much. As always, a pleasure to connect and be with you. Um, and yes. be sure to check out my other testimonial series. Uh, there's a whole bunch to, to kind of give you a flavor of what I do, how I work. Um, all right. Well, all blessings right. and blessings to you too.